Humble yourself to those who are not normally part of your circle of association. You know, subhanAllah, I have a lot of Turkish people that visit my home in Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, my wife, she's of a Turkish background, huge Turkish community. She's got like 10,000 cousins. <laughs> and either we're at their house or they're at our house. But that's not enough. See, being associated with your cultural community as a Muslim is, is great, no problem. But limiting yourself just to Bahasa Malaya, uh, you know, Somali Waria, you know, uh, Anjera and Moz and Sukar, and that's it. That's the only thing I know. Those are the people that I bring into my home because we're either family or connected or we have business. It's only those, well, what about that brother who you see every night in Taraweeh? That man who always beats you to the first line. That guy who has taqwa, who's there keen, who carries with him a, a momentum of barakah. And the only reason you haven't invited him to your home is because he doesn't speak your language? Your eth ethnic language of back home language? Is because your skin color doesn't match or your ethnicity doesn't match? And Ramadan is meant to break down those barriers. And therefore you should endeavor to walk off that beaten path and to seek to serve people in your community who are not from those who are regular members of your circle of influence and friends. It's not about what degree or knowledge or scholarship you have. It's not about what your ethnicity is or what your cultural background is. There's a time for that. There's 20 days for that. But at least have two or three or five or ten for other people who deserve your love and attention equally. And that was the habit of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.